Welcome one and all to another fantastic installment of Devon Tell. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what Devon Tell is, Devon Tell is basically an initiative to allow people of the DAO to have a platform to be able to... Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Everyone, if you don't mind, could you uh, mute? Shark, you're unmuted. You did. I force muted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. So, uh, as I was saying, um, Devontel is a platform for for people of the DAO to be able to present all the cool projects or or topics they're passionate about uh, in a thirty minute window, allowing people to uh, have a glimpse into all the cool stuff you're working on, as well as to ask questions. So. Uh, very pleased to uh, hand off the mic to our very own Daiwat. Take it away, Daiwat. Thanks, Nav. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for being here. I really appreciate, really appreciate all of you being here. So, uh, I would say a few weeks ago, uh, I created this RFC about a Web three specific UI library, which would basically uh, handle uh, web to use specific use cases. Uh, uh, I got the inspiration for this uh, back, uh, project for uh, from Scaffold ETH. Um, Scaffold ETH is, I'm not sure uh, if you have watched that stream that Nader did with Austin Griffith. Uh, scaffold ETH is basically a template that lets you get in up and running with uh, an Ethereum project with a dev environment for smart contracts. And and it also has a UI, which basically generates itself once you provided the contract. So I really, I really like uh, Scaffold ETH, but unfortunately, it also, it is also like uh, uh, extremely, extremely bloated. And the UI components aren't typed. They are written in JavaScript. And the documentation around it isn't that great. And it's not, yeah, it's it's basically a hassle to use. So that's 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 the basically the biggest reason why I thought of creating something from scratch, even though it's not really from scratch. It, it takes inspiration from Scaffold Lead, app and so many other projects like that. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, but yeah, we we are starting in, from scratch in terms of code, but we are taking a lot of inspiration from these projects. So I'm just going to share my screen now, uh, basically show you around the current state of the project. And first of all, the RFC. So initially, Web3 UI was basically just meant to be a set of UI components, which are, which help you get started with an Ethereum application with React. But later on, we had some discussions and eventually we decided to create uh, three packages, uh, one containing the UI components, uh, one containing the, some hooks, which we thought would be useful and a third package called core, which would be like a combination of these two, which would just work out of the box. And, um, yeah, this is the storybook of the project. We have, uh, a single storybook for the entire project. So before, before I, uh, get into, uh, showing you around the current state of the project, uh, I would say, uh, that we, we have like taken, um, uh, a lot of inspiration from, maybe I'm repeating myself, but uh, we have taken a lot of inspiration from already existing projects and we are trying to take all the good parts that we find and trying to combine it into one good thing. So yeah, it. This is certainly extremely ambitious, but I, I see this as like an excellent learning ex exercise, if anything. And 
in the best case we would have something extremely useful on our hands uh so yeah let's let's have a look at the current state of the project so this is this is the storybook uh, that we have right now uh, we don't have a lot of components at the moment but uh we have or uh, like 5 to 10 working working parts right now and we have a lot of things planned for the future uh so the first thing we created was uh having something that just literally displays an e an ethereum address so if you like pass in an ethereum address to this component it will try to resolve the ens related to that address if it finds an ens it will just show that ens otherwise it will like sh show a shortened version of that address then we have an ad address input component which is an extremely uh, common component used in ethereum applications you will basically just uh, so uh, so a drawback we have right now is you have to be connected to the main net to for this to work but uh we have an issue open for that and someone is already working on it so if i refresh this i should see my address down below yeah so this is basically what you'll get uh as a value and then you can use it for calling and transaction etc etc we have a component that displays an nft so you just provide it with a contract address and the token id and it will just render the nft for you it supports gifs it supports videos it supports audio and we also have this uh nft gallery component which shows someone all the nfts owned by someone so that's that's really neat this is uh basically all we have in the component section right now we have like seven prs open uh for different all sorts of components um uh, um and we yeah, have we are really taking our time with reviewing the VR, prs properly so yeah uh, i'm pretty sure by the end of next month we have will have quite a few more components in this in this group of components um then we have uh some hooks uh these hooks are really similar to what you will see in use tab but we have like just tweak them a little we have uh, even like more a lot of the code has been like inspired from use tab uh but we have just the reason why we created this hooks package is because we want a specific api if that makes sense the the api provided by use tab wasn't uh wasn't really i wouldn't say nice but wasn't exactly perfect and yeah we are just trying to experiment with this uh and see see where we go uh so we have this use contract hook which basically lets you interact with the contract uh if i open up the code for it so yeah it's it's like an extremely basic hook it you just pass in an address you pass in an abi and it just uh lets you interact with the contract now the the i would say the usb of this of this project is the the core package because that's that's really what's vastly different than uh most projects available already so if i open up the story for this you'll see that all you need to basically lock someone in you are uh, using their wallet is basically like two lines of code you just specify the network that you want this is the chain id for link b and you place this connect wallet component here and that's it that's all you need so under the hood 
this is this is using our hooks package and the the great thing about this is that once you once you do this when someone clicks on this you can get in you can get info about the connection from anywhere inside your app using this hook this and you can also use uh, other hooks like a use contract we are working on a hook for contract functions use app also has one for that so so that you can easily handle uh, transactions basically error states loading states all of that will play extremely nicely uh, with the, the the entire setup really so this is this is like the source code but this is what you'll actually write this in my opinion is like so much easier than writing like hundreds of lines of code just to get someone to sign in using metamask and this is really the reason why i i wanted to create this project and i i think that's that's the reason why the team the team uh, working on this project has been uh, you know coming up with ideas and have been working with working so well uh, most of us aren't in the same time zone so we have been working async and some of the prs that have been reviewed are like amazing i I really didn't expect that. So if you, if you are new to open source, there are some really great conversations in those VRs. So yeah, that's that's basically a quick overview of what the what the project is right now. I think I'm almost going too fast, but yeah, that's that's the state of it right now. Oh, this and is... if you if you want to have a look at a an example use case of the hooks i just i was just experimenting we just released a version and i was just experimenting with it recently this is an example that you can check out and yeah this is this is super early days in this project and almost 20 people have been working on this and i'm super excited for the future of it and yeah, I, I, I'm grateful to, you know, I'm grateful to be working on this project. Yeah, this is fantastic, Daiwa. Just being able to uh, have all that, uh, all that boilerplate abstracted away and only have 10, 10 lines of code enable you to connect to a blockchain is, is awesome. Uh, one one uh, question I have for you is, uh, is it only limited to uh, Ethereum, like being able to connect to an Ethereum wallet, or are there plans to extend this to, say, like connecting to a Solana wallet or, or whatnot? Great question. Okay, so uh, I, I would love to uh, make this uh, chain agnostic, but for now, I guess it's a it's a good idea to validate this uh, idea by creating this for specifically ethereum and react so that we can see if this is actually useful because like i said this is an extremely ambitious experiment and if people find this useful i'm sure i'm sure we'll create something for you know solana or any other chains perfect and uh for passing in so uh, are, are you are, are you and the team hosting your own like Infura account or whatnot to be able to connect to the, the, the main net or are you allowing people to pass in their own um, uh, API keys to be able to do that? Hmm. So yeah, we, we are letting them pass Infura keys. Uh, they are optional. You don't need an Infura key for everything, but just in case you, in places where you need it, we can yeah we are accepting it in the in the provider component that we are using and while we're at it uh, i forgot to mention that the the ui library that we have the components that we have all of them are based off of chakra so and you so you can basically pass any prof that you can pass to a chakra component so you can basically apply your existing chakra themes 
you can pass in any props that you you can pass to a chakra input to our address input and yeah it just plays along nicely it it, it literally is chakra ui under the hood awesome awesome that's great stuff does anybody else have any questions for diawat and team Hey, this is not much of a question, but um, I just wanted to say great work on this Diwat and everyone who's been working on it. I, I've used uh, Scaffold ETH a bunch in the past, and I totally agree. It's really bloated. And so I think that's a great goal to kind of make this a lightweight library. But yeah, just uh, congrats on everything and good work. I have no clue what to about. Thanks, Jake. Uh, and yeah, I... I... the entire team i would like i would like to congr- congratulate all of them because uh, we have been surprisingly working extremely efficiently even though none of us are in the same time zone so yeah I, i'm not i'm not sure how many of you are here if any of you are here just feel free to uh, you know uh, speak up and share anything that you want I want to ask you um if sure. someone uh, wants to contribute and help you build the uh, uh web UI where where can he start Um I would say you can uh you can start by uh dropping the message in the web web3 UI channel uh, it's in the dev guild and then you have you can have a look at the open issues uh, on the repo uh, there are usually quite a few issues open and if no one has been already assigned to an issue it's basically up for grabs so you you just go on and comment on it and please let us know if you encounter any issues while trying to contribute because we are we are just upgrading our documentation as we go uh Jo- Jose has been has been working on the documentation. I think he has done a great job up till now. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are edge cases. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess another what's question. Been, uh, yeah, go for it. What's been something? <laughs> you found surprising or challenging about this project uh yeah that's that's a great question and that that's something i was all planning on sharing with <laughs> i think i completely forgot about it so i would say the biggest challenge is having a concrete road map ahead of us while we are trying to discover what we are actually trying to build because i i would say that this phase first of all this phase is so early here and there's not a lot of um hey hey can you mute out of someone's mic <laughs> okay uh so first of all there's the space is so early there's not a lot of you know well maintained packages that you can refer to unlike in web2 where there are libraries like chakra ui you know uh, chakra ui material ui you know widely adopted and you basically know what's a good practice and what's not while in the web3 space we are everyone still basically trying to figure things out uh we are fortunate that we have some projects to look up to like scaffold eth use tab web3 react the uh web3 modal by the way we are using all of these projects uh in our uh, in our library so yeah we are just discovering new information as we go so the road map is constantly changing so that's getting a bit hard to keep up so often i'm finding myself like de- thinking about what we actually want to build with some component or some functionality 
fan i'm re- reviewing a pr or putting in a pr myself so yeah that's been a challenge for i i would say everyone almost everyone in the team yeah it's always a challenge trying to navigate such a ambitious project but uh you guys are doing a fantastic job so far uh uh one question for me is um uh, is the library ready for consumption Thanks. now no. yeah yeah no worries no worries yeah it's a, the the question was uh is the library available for consumption now like can can i go and and grab the the connect wallet component and start using it or would you say it's still under development it's two cups per one couple are you still there you you show up as on the screen but maybe Darwat is having uh, mic problems at the moment. Um, Trism is idle right now. That's weird. Maybe computer issues. Well, that's that's a shame. Uh, while we wait for Darwat to come back, uh, I guess I can use this opportunity uh, to say that there. For the next Devantel, uh, it won't. Uh, the next scheduled Devantel will be for January sixth. Um, there won't hey, be. Uh, yeah. My my internet just went off for yeah. a second. Yeah, we suspected as much. Yeah, all good. I think I I think I caught your question. Yeah. So I want me to answer that. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, uh, I would say the in its current state it's extremely unsta- unstable because things are working so you definitely can use the hooks but and also the also the uh, components but you, you you should expect to see some weird errors because for example we haven't added support for ens on test nets so you'll just basically get through an error if you try to use an address input on ring p and you pass in an ens things like that Gotcha. So, yeah, if if you're planning to using use it on anything serious, uh, I would say you wait for V one. Gotcha, gotcha, awesome. But if anyone wants to experiment and you know uh, play around with it, I I would more than welcome any feedback because that would be so crucial right now. Yes, for sure, for sure. Uh, we're coming up on time, uh, about six minutes left. Are there any other questions for Daiwa and team? Um, if there aren't any questions, uh, Miral has prepared Po apps for everyone. Uh, this is the first time um, <laughs> uh, I've created Po apps, so <laughs> this is there's a link to the spreadsheets. Uh, try claiming one, everyone, and. Just delete the link if you successfully claim it. And again, shout out to Miral for the great design. Yes. Yeah, big shout out to Miral for that awesome design. And hopefully we can make these POAPs a regular thing for future DevIntels going forward. For sure. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> POAPs are gold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, if there are no further questions, uh, you can always reach out to um, Daiwad and team in the Web3 UI uh, Developers Guild channel or or on the uh, GitHub repository itself. Um, and for some final uh, closing words for me. So as I was saying before, uh, the next two Fridays in December, uh, we won't be having any official dev and tells just because it's they fall on uh, the 24th and 31st respectively. Uh, so the next scheduled dev and tell will be on January 6th. And so far, uh, all the, the Friday slots in January are open. So if you have uh, something cool you want to share, a project, or, or just something you're, you're passionate about, 
please go ahead and, and sign up. You, the instructions to sign up can be found on the uh, Notion wiki that's pinned in the DevIntel channel. If you don't have access to the DevIntel Dev channel, I will also post that link in the developer's voice text uh, shortly after this call is concluded. And yeah, uh, just wanted to say a very uh, happy holidays and happy new years to everybody and hope you get some time to actually recharge these last two weeks uh, of December and uh, come back extra strong for the 2022 push. So uh, with that. Happy holidays, everyone. Yes. Uh, and thanks for hosting this, Nab. Yes. This is like a great initiative. I've, I've been loving every single session, even though I, was able, I wasn't able to make the last two. Uh, I, I think I catch all of them on YouTube. Yes. So thanks for recording them as well. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. I'm enjoying them as well. I'm sure everybody else is, is too. I think today's uh, attendance is the highest we've ever had in our short existence. <laughs> so very promising, very nice. promising. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, with that, I will stop the recording now.